Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ergonomics and Facilities Planning for Hospitality. We are already at our 15th week, and for week 15, our topic is about the outer envelope of the establishment. So once again, this PowerPoint presentation was prepared by Sir Gemwal Antonio Garcia. So for week 15, uh, we will identify the problems of building structures and exterior facilities, and we will also discuss the preventive exterior facilities. The envelope and is made up of exterior elements of the building, which is the roof, exterior walls, including doors, windows, structural frame, and the foundation. So this is uh, uh, what comprises the building, and the various parts of a building must work together. If any one part is neglected, it can have an adverse effect on the others as well. So the roof is a critically important part of any building. It is not uncommon to find roofs with very few problems over a 20 to 30 year period. A roof's life expectancy depends on the quality of the construction materials and the skills of the builders and the effectiveness of the preventive program. Basically, the basic structure for the roof, of course, uh, it is composed of a deck and a covering. So the deck is a structural material that covering is placed upon, and the deck is usually made of uh, wood, metal, or concrete. Sorry for the typographical error. So we have here wood, wood, metal, or concrete, and the roof system is the combination of all the components of the roof that act together to create a weather and climate barrier for the building. So. We have several, let's see. So we have several uh, roofing materials, including the asphalt or fiberglass shingles, roof, roof, roll roofing, split wood shakes, sawn wood shingles, clay and concrete tile, steel and aluminum, and various types of build up and single ply materials. So uh, the primary purpose, of all this roofing system is to keep water from penetrating below. So we have here uh, once again uh, for added protection uh, a layer of asphalt or tar impregnated paper called roofing felt is installed directly on the roof's desk. So when roofs are relatively flat, multiple layers of felt may be sealed together to form a moisture barrier. So this is for our roofing system. So the next one is flashing and it is installed under the roofing and up the size of equipment for roofs contact walls. Flashing is usually form of sheets of aluminum or copper with edges and joint seals with elastomeric materials. So for the common problems of the roof system, we have here the following, uh, low temperature brittleness, high temperature flow, physical abuse, structure overload of the system, tears in the membrane, and heavy vibrating equipment. So these are the common problems for our uh, roofing system damage. Usually uh, it's because of the slow deterioration caused by the moisture or of the um, weather, climate, and also sudden damage from winds or external forces, uh, lalo na lalo na yung mga tornado or malakas na pagulan or malakas na paghangin. So these are the problems uh, for the roof system. So once again, we have lower temperature, brittleness, high temperature flow, physical abuse, structural overload of the system, tears in the membrane, and heavy vibrating equipment. So the next one, uh, how are we going to uh, have a uh, maintenance for this one or the preventive maintenance? So a preventive maintenance program should include regular inspections, lalong lalo na after a major external force, which is the storm or uh, climatic season every year, lalo na sa mga lugar na malamig, which they have snow there, mga ganon. So we also have here removal of all foreign objects and repair of blisters and um, maintenance of all flashing and all of the uh, balas. So for inspections, to properly inspect a roof, we have here a checklist. So what is the checklist? Uh, look closely at any known or suspected areas of the cage. 
We also have our remove leaves and debris from the roof, especially around rain areas. Not any evidence of pounded water, even if no water now remains. Inspect flashing drains, metalwork, and other rooftop accessories that contact that membrane. Inspect the roof surface carefully for any cracks, bulges, or unusual appearances. And as part of the inspection process, the condition of the roof should be documented. This is especially true if it is found. So that is for the inspection of the roof. So for the exterior walls, naman. So we have this as a building, the roof now is for the exterior walls. So for exterior walls, exterior building walls have two basic functions. So ano ba to? to enclose the usable parts of the building and also to provide support higher floors and the roof system. So basically, the exterior walls are concrete uh, variety of materials such as timber, concrete, and steel. So a wall may be an integral unit or may be constructed in pre assembled units and joined together on the job site. Walls can be classified as bearing or not bearing, depending on whether they support other building elements or only themselves. So the common problems that we could encounter for exterior wall is poor appearance. So usually ito yung mga uh, hindi maganda yung pagkagawa. Another one is loss of waterproofing. So usually for exterior walls, um, I don't know if you have ever heard of this. Usually for exterior walls, meron silang tinatawag na paint system na kung saan waterproof yung uh, walls na kahit anong ulan, hindi, uh, hindi ano, nadadamage yung exterior walls. They also have energy loss and structural problems such as cracks, lalo na um, after uh, some uh, external forces such, such as earthquakes and so on and so forth. So for pre preventive maintenance, we have uh, painting, inspecting, cleaning, and maintaining, of course. So for painting, dapat um, scheduled yung pag uh, palette ng painting or repainting for the exterior walls. Also, exterior walls should be inspected uh, based on the um, advice schedule, lalong lalo na pag may mga external forces na na-experience a particular place wherein the building structure is uh, located. We also need the exterior walls to be cleaned as well and also maintained. So sa pag-maintain, kasali na dyan yung painting, inspecting, and cleaning. So for windows and doors, these windows and doors need sealants around their edges to keep moisture out and maybe weather stream to prevent heat loss or grain. So buildings can lose significant amounts of heat in cold months and cool air in hot months. If windows and doors are not properly designated and maintained. So yan yung nangyari. Uh, they lose significant amount of heat in cold months and cool air in hot months. So the glass in the windows is referring to IS glazing. So, ito yung mga kailangan i-take note usually sa size ng mga glass usually. And windows should be inspected regularly for ease of opening and closing, loose fitting frames, crack glazing, damaged hardware, deteriorated caulking, and rust. Doors may be wooden or metallic, solid, or hollow as well. And fire safety codes may, be, may stipulate that all regular door be installed next to revolving door as an emergency exit. So doors should be inspected periodically as well. So for the structural frame of door, uh, we have uh, for the structural frame, we have here the following. So focus greater than the building was designed to handle. Uh, biological agents such as fungi or termite activity. We also have thermal stress, settlement in the foundation system, changes in basic materials use, uh, usually loss of elasticity in wood and metals, drying out of timber members, and so on. Uh, shrinkage, 
water and sunlight penetration or infiltration, loss of adhesion, bonding, etc. Poor quality workmanship in original construction, dampness, use of damaging chemicals. So these are for the, uh, the defects in structure or frame that result from the following. So ito yung mga dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng defect ang isang structural frame. So for the preventive maintenance for structural frame, uh, you need to inspect all visible structural members. Also inspect other building features that might give telltale signs of structural problems. So for example, may nakita ng crack sa wall, sa floor, or sa ceiling. So that might be a sign na kailangan siyang i-inspect and in order for the structural frame to be maintained or maayos. So checking doors and windows for proper alignment and closure, tightening of all connections, weatherproofing, so sa painting din yan, and structural elements, maintaining fire fireproofing materials, checking reinforced concrete members, and preserving structural steel members. So that is for our preventive maintenance. For inspection naman, uh, the structural frame is usually not exposed to view, but can be inspected fairly easily through access panels and behind the scene areas. So this inspection should take place at least once a year and answer at least the following question. So first question is, have there been any changes since the previous inspection? So pag mag inspect ito yung kailangan i-take down and kailangan itanong ng isang inspector sa kanyang uh, inspection uh, schedule. So also, are bolts tight? Are the bolts tight and welds intact? Uh, is rust an acceptable level? Are structural beams deformed or bent? Are fireproofing materials in good condition? And then are, are, are course and attachment in good condition? So that is for our structural frame. Next that we have to consider is the foundation. So of course, foundation are traditionally constructed of stone or concrete and the rest on a solid underground working base. Cross walls commonly used around a building in cold climates and are usually part of the foundation system. So their primary purpose is to exclude entry of or frost part of the foundation system. Their primary purpose is to exclude entry of frost into the foundation and their structural uses are normally very limited. So, uh, yung foundation, they are structurally designed to carry the various loads of the building. So, we have the dead load. It refers to the weight of the building itself and the live load. So, uh, yung weight inside the establishment. So, ano ba yung mga nasa loob ng building or establishment? We have the people, equipment, furnishings, and so on and so forth. So, Yan yung live load na sinasabi nila and dead load naman is the building itself. So we also have loads and stresses that imposed by nature. So ano kaya ito? So we have here the wind, rain, snow, and earthquake. So foundation walls commonly also serve as basement walls as well. So the common problems usually associated with foundations, we have here the settlement, the disintegration of structural parts, frost heave, lowering or raising of the water table, and displacement of underlying soil materials. So usually, uh, pag hindi maganda yung location uh, kung saan tinayo yung isang establishment or usually um, hindi maganda yung soil. So, there is a possibility that you might have a problem with the foundation. So, for the preventive maintenance on foundations and footing, we have here uh, some checklist that needs to be done. Uh, so, if there are footing drains, keep the outlets open so that new water stands in the drains. So keep rodent cover over all drain tiles, yung mga uh, rodent natin. 
relieve excessive water pressure from the outside, uh, maintain the integrity of the exterior waterproofing. If any excavation is done near the foundation, be sure the membrane is not disturbed. And for inspection, foundations are often difficult to inspect and generally it is impractical to inspect the underground portion of the foundation system. So the inspector should look for at least of the following. We have here any cracks to the foundation wall, evidence of water going down adjacent to the foundation, spalling or crumbling concrete, moisture penetrating the foundation walls into basement areas, so these are the oh, sorry for the uh, these are for uh, uh, the following checklist that the inspector should look uh, when it comes to uh, inspecting the foundation. So one, two, three, four. We have four uh, checklists for the elevators. Naman, uh, of course, uh, we know that elevator is. A substantial part of a building, lalo na sa hospitality industry. So, elevator systems are made of several components. So, a cable elevator system has an elevator shaft, a car on tab, guard rails, cables, counterweights, safety devices, and on elevator rides on wheels along the guide rails. Cables attach the car to counterweight the move in the opposite direction of the car. So for this one, and counterweights help offset the weight of the car and its passengers. So less energy is needed to move the car. Safety devices keep the car from moving past the lower most and uppermost floors. It serves and properly level the car at each floor. So should the cables holding the car break, rail clamps will slow or step the descent of the car and the bumpers installed at the bottom of the shop will absorb the impact limiting passenger injuries and physical damage to the car so this is the components of the elevator system so meron tayong two basic type of elevator system we have the cable and hydraulic so ang pinagkaiba nito uh, for cable elevators they move up and down with the help of cable and counterweights for hydraulic elevator naman, uh, wala tong cable or counterweights, pero instead, the car is mounted on a giant piston inside a cylinder and electric pump forces oil into a cylinder, displacing the piston and bracing the elevator or the car itself. So for the maintenance of elevator, many elevator components are covered under a maintenance contract with the elevator's manufacturer. So day-to-day -day maintenance, cleaning, inspecting, and lubricating, and some minor repair work is typically the responsible of the property's maintenance department. So that's it for our uh, week 15 lesson. So for your references or suggested readings, kindly look at your handouts or PDF files for those uh, references and suggested readings for week 15's topics and lessons. So for week 15, we have two activities. We have activity one and activity two. For activity one, the following are the common types of exterior facilities. We have the first one is storm water uh, drainage systems. And two is the utilities, and three is landscaping and grounds. So for this one, research on each of the given exterior facilities and identify the preventive maintenance for each of the given exterior facilities. So this is for activity one. For activity two, observe the pictures below and identify if there are issues on the foundation of the building structure or not. So in your handouts or PDF files, there are pictures attached on it. So kindly look at your handouts or PDF files for the pictures uh, that you need to observe for activity two. So once again, we have two activities for week 15. We have activity one and activity two. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. All uh, 
lessons, especially this video and our PDF files are posted in our uh, Google Classroom as well. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. So once again, this is our week 15 lesson. So thank you so much once again, everyone. And thank you, Sir Jamal, for the slideshow presentation.